Having Stephen King's name attached to a project often seems destined to obtain viewers, money, and sometimes even popularity. And this would certainly be the case with Children of the Corn. The movie is derived from King's 1977 short story of the same name, but numerous changes, additions, and liberties were taken to make it into a full-length feature, and it became a cult favorite, giving way to numerous sequels, reboots, and a place in pop culture that has extended decades. Hey, this is Jan Man, and this is a look back at Children of the Corn, directed by Fritz Kirsch from an adapted screenplay from George Goldsmith. There are several components of Children of the Corn that make it so memorable and effective. Right from the opening frames is the music by Jonathan Elias, which really sets this ominous tone imbued in mystery with notes and sounds that imply something biblical through its use of a children's choir. It's become synonymous with the movie and is as effective as other horror movies that get much more acclaim, such as The Exorcist or The Omen. Another great aspect is how the movie sets up its mysterious element through its opening scene of children brutally murdering all the adults in a diner and then cutting to the film's protagonists, Bert and Vicky. Through their point of view, the audience sees the endless rows of cornfields as they travel the Nebraska countryside en route to Washington, giving the feeling that something isn't quite right, like they're headed into nowhere and something is watching them from the corn. The same applies when they accidentally run over a child who has emerged from the cornfields, and when they go to the nearby town of Gatlin for help, the mystery behind the children and why they murder adults continues to slowly unfold. This effect is compounded by solid acting by Peter Horton and Linda Hamilton as Bert and Vicky. Yet perhaps the most effective performances are by John Franklin as Isaac and Courtney Gaines as Malachi. Franklin is able to channel this peculiar, creepy look and vibe for Isaac, the self-professed giver of his word or of he who walks behind the rose. Gaines Malachi also has a convincing menace with his long red hair, square jawline, piercing eyes, and clothes that look more fifth hand as opposed to second or third hand. Both believably portray children or teens long past innocence and are now entirely willing to die for their warped beliefs. Where the movie falters, however, is in its last act. Even by 1984 standards, there are some pretty lackluster effects that show this red-slash-yellow force of he who walks behind the rose taking over the cornfields and farm area, creating this big cloud-like formation. A couple of the non-brainwashed kids, Sarah and Job, tell Vicky and Bert that a Bible verse has to be read and the field must be lit on fire in order to stop he who walks behind the rose. Therefore, they burn the field and aside from Isaac becoming possessed by the force and snapping Malachi's neck, and a final stinger of one of the crazed kids waiting in their car to attack the quote interlopers one last time, the credits then roll. It's pretty anticlimactic given the well-constructed, ominous, mysterious, well-acted and paced first two acts highlighted by that incredible, appropriately eerie score. As is the case in other King narratives such as Carrie and that character's deranged mother or the mist and a woman's ability to use religion for power and fear, there is likewise a theme in Children of the Corn surrounding the dangers of religious fundamentalism. Gatlin is a town in which religion was a significant part of its culture and belief system. They name their children biblical names instead of any others that may stray from the Lord's book and they prayed to God for harvest after a lack of rainfall the previous year had caused them hardship. It is upon this glaring opportunity or weakness that Isaac comes in, brainwashes the children, and tells them that some deity is angry at them. They could have rejected this notion, but they are naive children, and as a group, they fell for it. Just like a certain cult leader in 1978 who got over 300 children to drink cyanide mixed in Kool-Aid, Isaac too has convinced these children to sacrifice themselves, in this case to the Lord or he who walks behind the rose. But the hunger for power doesn't end with Isaac, as Malachi likewise then uses the Lord or religion to convert the gullible children to do his bidding, to sacrifice Isaac instead of Vicky, the captured adult, which is supposed to be the core of their belief system. Isaac, then Malachi, another hook, line, and sinker for power through fear in the name of God. 